All right, guys. Brought this thing in the shop today after work. Oh. Got the computer hooked up, ran the cords, moved the rev limiter all the way up to 7200, so I know I'm not going to hit it. I uh, put her in first gear and held that little button down after the car was warm. And then I held this go pedal right to the floor. And this thing came up to 5,500 RPM. That is high, especially for my little car. I'm shifting at 58, the converter stalling at 55. That's not working very efficiently. Um, I'm gonna, gonna have to switch converters here eventually. I do have a couple other ones I can put in and try that uh, won't stall nearly that high. Uh, I would like somewhere 35 to four grand would be nice. 55's a little excessive. So um, good, tough converter, uh, just too much slip for what I need. So um, yeah, I think I might have a converter for sale. If anybody wants to buy one that uh, stalls at 55. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is what I've done, you know, I was running this setup. I showed you guys that before. I painted this black, blacked it out. Um, and then I got that transmission temperature gauge. So I'm going to put it in that spot. I just ordered a voltmeter, so I'm just going to get rid of the factory stuff here altogether. We're just going to run autometer gauges. Very easy to hook up, simple to deal with, and it'll fit in the gauge better. It's just going to look better. Um, if I was to run this gauge and then an auto meter one here, I either got to cut another hole in the gate in the uh, gauge face or buck this in half, and then that would just be stupid. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is I got another one ordered. I'm gonna put a transmission temperature gauge there, and I still got to go and get all the other stuff figured out for the gauges uh, on my gauge face. Block all that stuff out, get the pieces made, yada, yada, yada. The list goes on. All right. Um, one thing I do have to do is change out my uh, seat belts. Let's see, this one's got the tag on it. You can see the dates punched out are August and 16. So I was allowed to run through August of 18, which was perfect because that's basically when our season ends. So I got over two full years of use with these because when I got them, the date was punched and we were still before that. I think I got, I bought them in uh, April or May and they gave me till August. So they gave me an extra six months or so, which was nice, but they're outdated every two years. You got to replace these things. As it says right there, valid two years from punch date. So, time to put in some new ones. The passenger side, doesn't ma really matter. Those are just, you have to pull a 14 second pass anyways when you're using them. So, the, that, the date becomes mute, or moot, I guess. So, we're going to put in some new belts. Um, I'm not sure if you guys remember the last time I did this when I put these in it was a couple of years ago you have to do a three lap through here so the first one as you can see comes through here and then you go back around and through again um, I will take this apart and if I had a stand or something I'd show you what I'm doing but I'll take it apart well, I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is just take this piece out and then I'll show you what it looks like after that. All right, it's a bit of a pain, but I got it out. And then as you can see, if we lift this up like that, both of these that go around the bar go through there, the top and the bottom one. And that's where you get your third three passes from. So you get the bottom one that goes through and then around the bar and then back through for a second pass. And then the third pass is taking it and putting it half through that way like I just took it out so this goes in there goes all the way through three passes through 
those things will not come undone. Doesn't matter what kind of vibration you're putting through. This car shakes quite a bit. Nothing moved in two years. But she's time to change them, so I will finish taking the red part the rest of the way and we'll put in some new belts. All right, there we go. Got the harness out. Had to take the seat out to get it out, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Just to get the crotch strap out, part number five of the five piece harness. So while I got it out, I'm gonna touch up my paint a little bit more just to make it look that much better. A couple of little spots to get missed when you do it with the seats in. So, I don't know if you guys ever know, but the crotch strap is something that used to confuse me until I actually started getting used to these harnesses and stuff. It's not there to protect your junk, if anybody's wondering that. The point of it is, until you run without it, you won't know. It keeps the harness down in the proper location where it's supposed to be on your body. And if you got everything tight and where it's supposed to be, you're supposed to have these things cinched pretty tight so you can't really move in that seat. So just so you know, it keeps um, the, the bands coming down across your shoulders and chest and the ones coming from your hips all in the proper location. It's not there to hurt you or something if you get into a crash. It's not going to crush your nuts by any mean. It's called a crotch strap because that's where it's located, not what it's protecting or anything like that. So that's the point of it. Um, in the Camaro, I've got a four-point harness. Um, I don't have the crotch strap in that one. And if you move forward in the in the harness, you actually feel everything ride up onto your chest and instead of on your hips and your stomach where it's supposed to be. So there you go, a little bit of lesson in uh, harnesses. All right, I also found a little bit of this here. So thankfully that's a big structure part, but we got uh, a little bit of rust to get rid of. I'll do that quickly while I'm in here. Not exactly what I wanted to be doing today, but uh, it should be, shouldn't take a whole pile of time to get rid of that. So we'll clean up a little bit of weld, or clean, clean up a little bit of rust, throw a small patch in there. Paint are all back. Good thing this paint is uh, pretty easy to find again. And uh, there we go vacuum it up and then we'll go from there all right we got the parts marked out that I'm gonna cut out um, so got to be careful going over here and over here because the main structure through there so I'm just gonna have to cut lightly um, so what I did is I'm just following kind of manufacturers lines or whatever and then I just squared it up on this side try and take out as little as you can but getting all the rust so that's what I did um, it's easier to hide things it's just a good practice to get into. So if you're filling out here where people can actually see it, it's a good habit to get into, to use the manufacturer's lines and hide all your seams and shit like that. So that's what I'm doing. And then uh, not like anybody's really going to see it. It's under the seat or whatever, but just a good habit to get into and follow. And then when you do do something a little more critical, then uh, you got it covered. All right, so I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to make a template. Um, I have a piece... This is a piece that I used when I was working on the Camaro, replacing pieces of the floor in it. So it's got some nice big flat spots in it, which I will use to cover up that. So I'll make a template, cut it out of here, weld it in very carefully, and then uh, paint it and we'll be done. All right, so got everything done. You can see there, got the piece patched in. You can see, you can see where I got her in there. Got everything painted. Time to start going back together. The car's starting to look pretty good. Keep doing stuff like this, find little spots, patch them up, eventually I'll have a car without rust. Now if only I had a car with decent paint. Yeah, fuck, whatever. Um, we'll just keep working on her, eventually it'll be a nice car or I'll find a different one. <laughs> All right, so, yes. I'm gonna put everything back together and that will be the end of this little tiny video. While I'm at it, um, I think I told you guys about the problems I had with my master cylinder last year. Um, if not, quick little recap. All right, the rod popped out 
And what it did was fell down and hit the snap ring that's in there. There you can see it. Busted it out. And the whole back of the master, the piston on the master came out last year while I was racing. I actually had to roll into my pits as slow as I could. And I used my ramp as a stopping device. Uh, really, really sucked. We're not going through that again. Um, what the problem was, was my stopper was not adequate. This time it is. I have a bolt that goes against metal. The stopper is more than adequate this time. And the problem is, when that all happened, that master cylinder took some damage. My braking has not been the same since. So what I'm going to do, you can see the little trickles. That's brake fluid. Since I've painted the floor, so it's slowly, slowly seeping out. Braking's not great. Uh, I have to pump it up a few times. So what I'm going to do is change the master cylinder again. Um, I walked you guys through that once already. I'm not going to do it again. Uh, it's a couple bolts, couple lines. Change it out. Piece of cake on this car. Especially since everything's out of the way. So there you go. A um, little bit of history on what's been going on with the car. Yeah, you can see the puddle there. All the drips coming down the floor. So I'm going to... If we have a master cylinder in stock, I'm going to do that tonight. And then uh, that'll be the end of my night. Try and take a little bit earlier tonight. Uh, working on the transmission last night. I didn't get out of here till 11 o'clock. I'm a little tired. so. Alright, I'm going to bolt everything back together. Remember, like, share, give me some comments. Tell me what uh, you like and don't like about my videos. Anything I can change. And uh, we'll keep going. Thanks, guys.